What if there was an artifact so powerful it could give you eternal life or unlimited wealth? Well, what if I told you there's an ancient object that's said to be able to do just that? An artifact said to be 36,000 years old, originating from the lost city of Atlantis called the Emerald Tablets. Now, the story of the Emerald Tablets is incredible, and it involves the secrets of the universe, alchemy, eternal life, secret societies, the lost city of Atlantis, the pyramids of Egypt, a secret truth, and a hidden lie. A lie that you might have heard that's being spread today. Now, does all this sound kind of hard to believe? Well, what if I also told you that some of the most intelligent people in history, like Sir Isaac Newton, Roger Bacon, and Carl Jung, were obsessed with something called the Emerald Tablet and believed that it held the key to an ancient secret? My name is Morg, and I've devoted my life to studying hidden knowledge, and I've seen so much misinformation going around about the Emerald Tablets, but today we're going to unlock their great secret. First, let's look at the legend of the Emerald Tablets. Now, the Emerald Tablets are said to be 36,000 years old and written by Thoth. Well, who is Thoth? Thoth is the Egyptian ibis-headed god credited with the creation of writing, magic, and wisdom, and the keeper of divine records. So does that mean that the emerald tablets were written by a god? Well, as we dig deeper, we find that some believe that Thoth was an individual that actually existed known as Thoth the Atlantean, a sage and ruler who was from the lost city of Atlantis. Now, according to the philosopher Plato, Atlantis was founded by the gods and its rulers were half human and half god. Thoth the Atlantean was no ordinary human. He was a high priest and king of Atlantis, and he knew things that we just couldn't fathom today. He knew the secrets about life, death, the cosmos, and the fabric of space and time itself. Well, as we know, the city of Atlantis was destroyed and sunk beneath the sea. So did Thoth and all his knowledge sink with the city? Well, here's where it gets more interesting. Thoth, knowing the secrets of life and death, was immortal. After the sinking of Atlantis, it's said that he became the ruler of Egypt for some 16,000 years. Now, that's a long time. Well, it gets even more intriguing. Thoth, they say, etched his secrets on a set of 12 tablets called the Emerald Tablets. Now, these tablets weren't made out of stone or clay, but from a strange emerald green material. Now, when Thoth was ready to leave Egypt, he built the Great Pyramid of Giza over the entrance to the Halls of Amenti. And it's in the Great Pyramid, surrounded by Egyptian guards, that Thoth left the Emerald Tablets. But what were these secrets exactly? Well, some say immortality, eternal life, and the secrets of the universe. And others say it's the key to unlimited wealth. Well, today, we're going to answer that question. But first, you have to wonder, something that powerful, where are they now? Are they lost under the sands of Egypt, like under the seas of Atlantis? Well, we're about to find out. It's said that the tablets were removed from the pyramid and lost, but fast forward to the 20th century, 1925 to be exact, and a man named Maurice Doriel enters our story. Now, Doriel's the kind of Indiana Jones of the Emerald Tablets. Doriel, who's known for his explorations of the occult, the esoteric, and all things mystical, he actually discovered the Emerald Tablets and returned them to the Great Pyramid in Egypt. And not only did he find all 12 tablets, what's even more amazing is that he actually translated them. Well, technically he translated 10 of them because he said that two of the tablets contain such deep secrets that their translation is forbidden. Now, of course, these weren't ordinary tablets. Doriel describes them as a bright emerald green substance that's completely indestructible, crafted through alchemical transformation. He said they were engraved in Atlantean language and that the characters responded to thought, that if the reader's thought waves were attuned correctly, they would release a vibration in the mind of the reader. Well, hold on just a minute. Is this starting to sound too crazy? Well, stick with me. It gets crazier, and we're going to unlock all these secrets. So, where are the tablets now? Well, we'll get to that, but first, what did they say? In 1939, Doriel revealed his translation to the world, and it was all about the journey of the soul, the nature of consciousness, the secrets of life and death, and the nature of space and time. Thoth engraved this information as a way to help humanity evolve and transcend. Now, in the Emerald Tablets, Thoth says, Unto thee, O man, have I given my knowledge. Unto thee have I given of light. Hear ye now and receive my wisdom brought from space planes above and beyond. 
Okay, great, but wait a minute. What about the money, the riches, the bread, unlimited wealth? How are we going to get that bag? Well, there's more to this story. It's said that Thoth, the ancient Atlantean, incarnated three different times in different bodies, and that his last incarnation was Hermes Trismegistus. Historically, Hermes Trismegistus was a legendary figure who was a combination of the Greek god Hermes and the Egyptian god Thoth. Trismegistus means thrice great or three times great, and Hermes Trismegistus is said to have written something called the Smeragdine Tablet, also known as the Emerald Tablet. And the Emerald Tablet was said to hold the secrets of alchemy turning metal into gold. Somewhere around the 2nd or 3rd century BCE, texts started to appear in Egypt, and these writings were supposedly from the legendary Hermes Trismegistus. These writings that were attributed to Hermes were called the Hermetica, and they were all about medicine, astrology, magic, and alchemy. And in one of these books, called The Pupil of the World, it's said that Hermes engraved and hid his teachings before ascending to heaven. Now, the writings of the Hermetica formed the foundation for Hermes Hermeticism, a belief system that sees all things in the universe as being unified and interconnected. Hermetic principles have influenced a lot of secret societies like the Freemasons, the Rosicrucians, and the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. In the 10th century, we have a record of an Arabic alchemist who had a vision of Hermes Trismegistus in a secret chamber in the pyramid, with a stone table on his knees inscribed with hieroglyphic symbols. Could Hermes Trismegistus really be the reincarnation of Thoth the Atlantean? The earliest version of the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus appears in a 9th century medieval Arabic text called The Secrets of Creation. Now, the Emerald Tablet is very short, only 14 lines long, but it's thought to be a guide for alchemical transformation and it was believed to contain the secret for turning metal into gold. But in the realm of the esoteric, not everything is always what they seem. Could there be more to it than that? So alchemy, as you know, is an ancient practice that has to do with manipulating elements, and it was actually the precursor to modern chemistry. And alchemy is most famous for the transmutation of metal into gold. And the secret to this process was said to be guided by the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus. But here's what most people don't know about alchemy. Not all alchemists were just trying to turn metal into gold. They were philosophers, mystics, and seekers of the truths of existence, and many of them believed that the Emerald Tablets contained an even deeper secret. Eliphas Levi, one of the world's most renowned occultists, said, Nothing surpasses and nothing equals, as a summary of all the doctrines of the old world, the few sentences engraved on a precious stone by Hermes and known as the Emerald Tablet. It is all of magic on a single page. Now, even though the Emerald Tablet is a single page, some of the most brilliant minds in history were obsessed with it. And one of the most famous was Sir Isaac Newton, the father of classical physics. But did you know that Isaac Newton had a secret life? Imagine Newton locked away in his study, surrounded by strange alchemical tools, because it turns out that the guy who discovered the law of gravity, the same one that we learn about in school, was also deeply involved with magic, the esoteric and hidden knowledge, and he was a passionate alchemist. He was desperately trying to decode the secrets of the Emerald Tablet to uncover the process of turning metal into gold. In fact, he even published his own translation of the Emerald Tablet. He was so obsessed in trying to discover the secrets of alchemy that it might have driven him insane. See, Newton had a complete mental breakdown, and one of the possible causes for his loss of sanity is mercury poisoning. And guess what? Mercury plays a fundamental role in alchemy. Now, this possible mercury poisoning is actually supported by the high levels of mercury and lead that researchers found in a hair sample. But the question is, was Newton, one of the most intelligent minds in history, simply wanting to create gold? Or was he trying to uncover a deeper secret hidden inside the Emerald Tablet? Well, we're going to discover exactly what that secret is. But hold on just a minute because there's something that you need to know. See, this story is about to get crazy. Are you ready? Because it involves secret societies. Let me explain. What if everything I told you so far was made up? A hoax? A fraud? What if the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, their discovery and their translation by Doriel, was nothing but a lie? What if these tablets never existed at all? Now look, I see a lot of New Agers and spiritual gurus talking about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Here's what they don't tell you. 
So how did Maurice Doriel find these tablets in the first place? These tablets made of an indestructible emerald material that could communicate with the reader's mind? Where are they now? It seems like that would be a pretty important thing to show people. Well, here's the thing. Doriel claimed to be in contact with the Great White Lodge. Now, this concept pops up a lot in occult circles and secret societies, and the Great White Lodge is supposedly a group of ascended masters or spiritual beings that exist in another realm and guide the destiny of humanity. So according to Doriel, these beings instructed him to find the tablets and return them to the pyramid. But before he returned them, he was allowed to translate 10 of the 12 tablets. Now, the whole, just stop and think about that for a minute. First of all, don't you think that that's awfully convenient. I mean, there's not a shred of proof that anything Doriel said actually happened. And second, if the goal is to get humanity to learn this spiritual information, don't you think that magic indestructible tablets in an Atlantean language that speaks to the reader's mind would be a pretty convincing thing to have around? But apparently these secret spiritual beings from another dimension told Doriel, nah, we're gonna hang on to these. Well, if we take a closer look at Doriel, we find a lot of shady things. Doriel claimed to have traveled all over the world to train in secret knowledge, like Darjeeling in India and then to a secret underground kingdom in Tibet. The only problem is, his passport showed that he didn't go to any of these places. And when he was confronted about this, Doriel tried to explain this away by claiming that, oh, well, they were astral travels in his mind. And it doesn't end there. Are you ready? He claimed that he was born with complete memory of his past lives and incarnations, that he was the anointed chosen one of the Great White Lodge, and he started a religious group called the Brotherhood of the White Temple. He prophesied the coming of an avatar chosen by the Ascended Masters to establish a new Golden Age of Enlightenment, which of course never happened. He claimed to have met two Atlanteans in Los Angeles who took him to a cave under Mount Shasta and told him about secret underground races. He said that an alien serpent race that piloted flying saucers would ally with the Antichrist, and that these serpent people were frozen in Siberia but became defrosted and overthrew the communist regime in Russia. There's more. I don't have time to keep going. It turns out that Doriel is less of an Indiana Jones and more of a Jim Jones. Okay, look, we have a lot more to this story and it's crazy, but I want to say something important here. Everything about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, that they're 36,000 years old, that Thoth wrote them, that they're from Atlantis, their translations, that Hermes Trismegistus is Thoth reincarnated, that all came from Doriel. Now, he said that. It's obviously, blatantly, totally made up. Now, that's my opinion, of course, but come on. Here's the important part. I see so many new age gurus and spiritualists on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram all over talking about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean as if it were 100% real. Now, either they're straight up lying or they don't do any research because it's very easy to find out that this is all made up. Telling their viewers or listeners that this stuff is true is extremely irresponsible. I grew up indoctrinated in Christianity and I saw firsthand how damaging deception can be. I left the church and I dedicated my life to finding truth. So on that note, let me tell you a little something about secret societies. Do you want to know what they do? I'll tell you. They create religions. Now that's not all they do, but it often plays a big part. Now as someone who spent years studying the occult and secret societies, I can tell you that what Doriel did is a very common tactic. They claim to have made contact with angels, gods, aliens, ascended masters, secret chiefs, whatever. Why? Because it creates a sense of authority. After all, who would question someone who claims to have communicated with higher powers? Now, a perfect example of this can be seen in Mormonism, a religion founded by Joseph Smith, who later became a Freemason. Smith claimed that he was guided by an angel and found secret golden plates engraved with Egyptian characters. Smith translated these plates, which became the Book of Mormon. So where are these golden plates? Of course, he returned the plates to the angel. Sound familiar? My point is, is that I find this deception disgusting, and it's extremely irresponsible for so-called spiritual gurus on social media to be spreading all this around, either knowing that it's fake and doing it for the views, or because they've done zero research. 
I believe firmly that reaching a higher consciousness does not lie in deception or dogmatic faith in some angel or ascended masters. It's about empowering humanity with the tools to question, to learn, to grow, and to think for themselves. It's about promoting reason, critical examination, logic, and cultivating the power of intuition. But hold on, because not everything in our story is false. Far from it. Now, everything about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, that's nonsense. But the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus, that is very real. Now, it's important, critical, to separate fact from fantasy here. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean are very likely a complete fabrication by Doriel, and there is no evidence to back up their existence whatsoever. The Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus, on the other hand, while it wasn't written by an incarnation of Thoth, and probably wasn't actually written by Hermes, it is a genuine ancient document that has fascinated some of the most intelligent minds in history, and its secret is much bigger than turning metal into gold. Now, on the surface, alchemy does seem to be about turning metal into gold, but there's a deeper, more profound truth to alchemy. It's not just about physical transformation, it's also about spiritual transformation, transformation of the soul, of the mind. Many believe that the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus, the one that alchemists like Isaac Newton were so obsessed with, was a guide for the transformation of the self and contained the secrets of the universe. Did you know the Emerald Tablets even influenced modern psychology? Take Carl Jung, for example. You know the terms introversion and extroversion, right? He came up with those. This Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, who is known for groundbreaking work on the human psyche, was deeply interested in alchemy. This is because Jung saw alchemy as a rich symbolic system. He viewed the process of turning metal into gold not as a literal chemical process, but as a metaphor for individuation, the psychological process of becoming an individual, a process of self-realization and self-understanding. In other words, that you are transforming yourself into gold, into a psychologically integrated and whole individual. Carl Jung said, The alchemical operations were real, only this reality was not physical, but psychological. Alchemy represents the projection of a drama both cosmic and spiritual in laboratory terms. The Opus Magnum had two aims, the rescue of the human soul and the salvation of the cosmos. Jung even wrote about and lectured about the Emerald Tablet. See, this text isn't about gold and metal, it's about existence itself, about the nature of reality and our place within it. So it's about time, what does the tablet say? Well, I'm going to read you exactly what it says. The 14 lines that have fascinated minds for over a thousand years, the Eliphas Levi said contained all the secrets of magic, influenced modern psychology through Carl Jung, and may have even driven Isaac Newton to madness. Then, I'm going to tell you what it means. Here it is, the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus. True without falsehood, certain and most true. What is below is like what is above, and what is above is like what is below. To accomplish the miracles of one thing, and as all things were derived from one by the meditation of one, so all things are born from this one thing by adaption. The sun is its father, the moon is its mother, the wind has carried it in its belly, its nurse is the earth. The father of all perfection of the world is here, its power is whole if it's converted into earth. You will separate the earth from the fire, the subtle from the dense, gently and with great skill. It ascends from earth to heaven, and then it descends again to earth, and receives the power of the superiors and the inferiors. Thus you will have the glory of the whole world and all darkness will flee from you. This is the strong force of all forces, overcoming every subtle thing and penetrating every solid thing. Thus the world was created. From this marvelous adaptions will arise, of which the manner is here. Therefore I am called Hermes Trismegistus, having the three parts of the philosophy of the whole world. What I have said about the operation of the sun is accomplished and ended." Okay, hold on. What the hell does that mean? How does this contain all the secrets of magic and the wisdom of the whole universe? No wonder Newton went crazy. Well, 
Actually, it's not that hard to understand. Let me give you my interpretation, line by line, then show you what it means. Keep in mind that when I use the word spiritual, what I'm referring to is the realm of mind, of energy, of frequency. Okay, let's begin. This is the absolute truth. What happens in the physical world happens in the spiritual world, and what happens in the spiritual happens in the physical. Both the spiritual and the physical are part of one reality. They're connected and amazing things happen because of this connection. Everything comes from a single source. All of creation, all of existence originates from this source, and it's constantly changing, evolving, adapting, and transforming. This source exists and is alive through an interaction of opposite forces. The source is spiritual energy in motion that manifests as the physical. This power of the source is everywhere. Its power or potential is fully realized when it becomes physical and manifests in the world. Learn to discern the physical from the spiritual. Understand them. The energy of the source is transforming through a process of spiritual evolution, which involves experiencing and understanding the physical and spiritual world. By understanding this process, you will know everything, and all that was once hidden will be revealed to you. The power of the source is the greatest of all because it is everything. Physical matter is its manifestation and transformation. This is how the universe was created. All transformations and variations we see in the world are the result of these cosmic processes outlined here. I am named Hermes Trismegistus, possessing the great wisdom of the entire world. My description of the process of creation, transformation, and evolution of the universe is now complete. Now you can see this is actually incredible information. What this is saying is that all of reality, which includes you and me, is an eternal process of a single evolving unity. That the realm of mind or energy or frequency is what gives rise to or manifests as physical reality. And that they're connected and evolving as part of one reality. So in a sense, the Emerald Tablet does contain the secret to eternal life because it reveals that even though we might be mortals in these bodies, ultimately we're part of the eternal source that birthed all of existence. And that is the real secret of the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus. It's not about creating gold or attaining material wealth. It's about inner transformation through understanding ourselves and our place in the universe. It's about looking beyond the physical and tangible and understanding the deeper metaphysical layers of existence. It's about finding the divine within us, about realizing that we have the potential to reach a state of divine understanding and enlightenment. While the Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean are almost so certainly a lie spread by Doriel. The Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus, while likely not written by Hermes, is very real. It's inspired minds across centuries, encouraging us all to find a deeper understanding of ourselves and the universe. So, in the end, the question I asked at the beginning, what if an ancient tablet holds the secret to the universe and the meaning of life itself? Well, the answer is it does, but not in the way you might have thought. It doesn't offer easy answers or infinite wealth, but a path to self-discovery, self-understanding, and if you put in the work, to self-transformation. But I want to know what you think. Do you think that Doriel made it all up? What about the information in the Emerald Tablet of Hermes itself? But hold on just a minute. Why am I even telling you all this? Why did I make this video? Because the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus is about understanding the truth about ourselves and existence. And it's my goal and the goal of everyone involved here to help create a new earth. And we do that by creating a new consciousness. We're the new beginning. We're the Neogenian. But there's one more video that you have to see, and it's all about an alien entity that contacted humanity in the 1980s that calls itself Ra. The same Ra of the Egyptians, and the hidden information that it reveals is incredible. Now, if you like what my channel is about, support my work on Patreon or join on YouTube at tier two or higher to get access to members-only videos every week. And as always, a big shout out to everyone who supports.